December 1st tonight, Australian shopping centres are becoming no-go zones for families and the elderly as gangs of teenagers run riot. Violence, intimidation and fear rule the streets as youth and race-based gangs force shoppers to seek out safer alternatives. And David Richardson has the story. After school at a typical suburban shopping centre, a magnet for massive numbers of kids. Within minutes, violence erupts, a sickening attack as a pack of teenagers descends on one boy. A shopping trolley goes flying through the back of the crowd, narrowly missing those involved. Then, as quickly as it starts, it's over. But the damage, the fear, lingers on. Who rules the streets here? The gangs. You've got to call them gangs. It is like a war zone. You feel very threatened. It's happening everywhere. Large shopping centres and malls becoming magnets for massive gangs of teenagers, some as young as 10. They rush through the shopping centre, up and down escalators. No idea of... Um, uh, the other, the other, other shoppers. No, no, no. No respect. No respect for other shoppers. Are they violent? They can be. Warren Fox has lived in his area for 65 years. He's now too scared to go shopping in his own neighbourhood, like others around him. In this area, there are a lot of elderly now that get other people to do their shopping, and that's a shame that old people have got to shop out of their own area to feel safe. Because they're so frightened. They're so frightened. These kids don't have manners. Deanne is a local businesswoman who's seen her area fall apart. She urges her clients to avoid the zone after 2.30 any afternoon. After 2.30, it's just, it's just a, like packs of, of young kids hanging around, um, you know, smoking and spitting at your feet. And I don't know if they're spitting at you, but that seems to be their behaviour. But it's not just gangs of school kids loitering around shopping centres. Racial gangs also concentrate in these areas. They're very racial as well. Um, you know, I haven't asked these kids their nationalities, but to me it's Middle Eastern versus Asian all the time. And, and it's pretty sad. You're seeing these, you know, Asian kids are a much smaller build getting their head pounded in the concrete. And I mean, what can we do? We can't run in. Intimidation is... That's where it all starts for these guys. It's all about strength for these guys. And they enjoy intimidating people. That's why they hang out together. Security expert Brett Stevens now advises shopping centres on how to deal with gangs of kids. Why do businesses put up with it? Why do shopping centres allow these kids to gather like this? Well, fear, you know, fear. And also, it doesn't come up on statistics. It's not like the police have gone, hey, intimidation's gone down this month, you know? It just... It's something just happens in that community. It, it lowers the standard of that community because these guys are allowed to walk around or get away with walking around intimidating people. We own this joint, bro! These kids might be boasting, but for businesses around here, it's not an idle threat. Police have the power to move these kids on to stop them loitering. But as soon as police move on, the kids come back. We'd been abused by a lot of people off the street. A lot of drug users, junkies, we have people come in here still from us. Oh, back with hills and Julie and Joanne are trying to make a go of their small clothing boutique. It's tough because it's not safe to trade after dark. Mum and Dad get scared for us trading on Thursday nights. We've actually yeah. been closing around 6 every yeah. Thursday night. We used to trade till 9, but yeah. we don't anymore. What does that do for your customers? It freaks them. <laughs> yeah, like, not only customers, just even people, you know, passing by. Harks has only been in business for eight months. Gang trouble is costing him money. Do you think people are scared? Yeah, I think they are. Intimidated? Yeah. It's just like a job. You wake up, you go to work, and if you're in a gang, you wake up and you go meet your boys, hang out with them every day. Same thing every day. You know. Justin was a lost boy, a gang member since he was 14. He hung out with other teenagers in groups as large as 20 to 30. Did you think about how intimidating you all looked? Um, that's probably what, like, what I liked about it. Probably thought we looked tough together and the more numbers you have, the more intimidating you look. It was his fiancée Jennifer and the birth of their son Elijah that saved Justin from the gang and turned his life around. Most of his mates are either still gangsters or in jail. I don't want to see these, these kids 
because they're on the cusp of going into a gang and we don't want to see them end up going into jail. But if we don't send the clear message that this is not tolerated in our community, you know, what do you reckon it's going, where do you reckon it's going to go? You're on their turf. You obey their rules. And if you don't? Well, you can end up with, a, with, a, with an accident, to be honest. David Richardson with that report and if you have gang problems in your suburb or if you have a story idea you'd like to share with us please go to our website at yahoo7.com.au forward slash today tonight or just give us a call.